So this video is a bit more for more advanced language learners or people that already know another language because that's what they grew up with. But if you're a new language learner, keep watching because you can use this concept in the future once you've started to learn and understand more of the language that you're currently learning. Now, I grew up in Australia, but my first language is Hungarian. Like I was born here, but I spoke Hungarian with my parents. Now, when I started learning Italian, there were concepts that I just did not understand. It was very confusing, very hard for me to imagine like how it works. For example, il mio gatto that means my cat but you say il which means the so the like literally word for word in english it's the my cat i remember i was like that makes no sense like why do they say the like it was so it was so confusing to probably understand and then i remembered like wait in hungarian you say otsitsan or mochkan which means like literally if you were to translate it, it's the cat my so they changed the, like they add the what would that be called? Like the possessive at the end of the word. Moch, like mochko means cat. Mochkan means my cat. But you got to add the o. So o in Hungarian means the. So o mochkan. And I remember when I just thought, I remember, I, was, I think it was in the car and I was like, wait, that makes so much sense. And then I realized that you can use another language that you know to learn a new language in the way that obviously there's words. Vocab is definitely the easiest case. So if you know... If you know French, to learn Italian is like very easy or vice versa. If you know Italian, to learn French or Spanish, very easy. Just in terms of the vocab, there's so much vocab that is like very similar. Because so like you knew French and English, it might be a better idea to try and learn the vocab for Italian through French, because that way it's like you're connecting ideas that are very similar, like spelt or like sound very similar compared to English, where the, although there's like a lot of cognates between Italian and English, there's definitely way more between French and Italian. But even then, there might be an English word that is more similar to the Italian word than French. It, it just depends. So you got to pick and choose and see how, like, try and see the easiest route that your brain can connect two concepts together. Even with Hungarian, there's a way less cognates. Like, Hungarian has very unique vocab, but there's still some words that are more similar to Italian than they are in English. For example, I remember the word tetto. Tetto means roof in Italian. Obviously, roof, tetto, like, there's no similarity. But in Hungarian, you say tetto. Now, it sounds different, but it's spelled almost the exact same. It's just Hungarian has, like, little, like, lines above it. It has, like, diacritics above the O at the end. Tetto, tetto. So, I remember when I first saw that, I'm like, oh. I'm like, no way, that was, that's so easy to remember. Torta, torta in Hungarian and Italian means cake. Torta, torta, la torta, la torta. That's, like, how you pronounce it. Torta is how you pronounce it in Hungarian. Little things like that. So vocab is a very easy way, but I'd say definitely grammar is like the OP. And that's like, you have to really think about the concept and you have to think about how you translate it. Now, now for example, I'm starting to learn Latin. Now, I used to learn Latin ages ago. That was the first language I tried to learn. And I don't know, it was just, it was very interesting to me. I'm going to be honest. It was just interesting, the idea of a Latin. And then eventually I gave up because, well, looking back on it, I was not learning in like the most ideal way as I could have. But I still learned quite a bit. And so I stopped it and then I picked up Italian. And it was like, I, I don't know, just like it was random. Like uh, just Italian, I knew Italian, like I had a friend that's Italian, why not? And then I actually finally started getting to somewhere that was actually a very good spot in terms of learning the language. And I actually learned how to like decently like speak, read, listen, all that. And now that I started revisiting Latin, well, obviously, the first thing is that I remember a lot of the words that I, I learned, like quella means girl, where means boy. Like some of it was like a little bit hard to remember, but then like when I was like, oh, where? Oh yeah, that, I remember now. Like the the connections were a bit rusty in my head, but like once I like revisited it, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. Even the grammar, like I didn't learn the grammar that well, especially back then. Like I didn't fully understand like the idea of grammar and how grammar works as much as I do now, but I still retained a lot especially like the cases. I remember like I was learning the cases and like I didn't get too far, but like I understand it a lot more better now than I did back then. But here's the thing. Back then I was learning Latin for English, but looking at it now, I should have learned Latin for Hungarian or at least compared a lot. And that's what I've been doing now is that Latin works more similar to Hungarian than it does to English. And it'd be a whole explanation. Like it might be too much, but like essentially like in English, the word order of a sentence is very important. You have to say the cat bites the boy or like the dog bites the boy. You can't say boy bites dog. Well, like you can say it, but it just means something completely different. 
in Latin and Hungarian, you can change the order wherever you want. Obviously, some sound more natural than others, and some sound more like proper, but the word order genuinely doesn't matter because the way that you designate who's the subject and the object of like, and like the receiver of the verb. So who's getting bitten and who bites, it is determined by like the word ending, which is called cases. Now, Latin and Hungarian both have cases. Well, Hungarian is a bit of a special case, but it's very like, it's very similar. It works in an extremely similar manner where recently I've now been translating a lot of those sentences that I didn't understand in Latin or it was harder for me to grasp in Latin to Hungarian now in Google Translate. And just like, oh, okay, I see how it works. That's what I'd say. If you know another language, whatever language it is, try and see how it is similar to some part that you might not be understanding in the language you're trying to learn. And the best way is just try and translate the sentence and think about what parts you're using. So like if you're translating a sentence, okay, am I using, am I using the, or am I using a, like these things change. Like some languages don't have the and a, for example, Latin, it doesn't have that. Russian doesn't have the or the word a, but Hungarian does. So just think about these things. And this one like tip has helped me learn Italian and Latin so much better and definitely way easier. I have to say though, it is a bit of like a privilege because like I know Hungarian. It definitely has helped me out and probably has made it easier to learn both of these languages more than other people. That's what I'd say. But I can't lie, learning I can't lie, learning Latin after learning Italian, it feels like cheats because like so many words are like very similar. Although there's sometimes like false friends that like you think, like you look at it and you're like, oh, it must mean the same word as this in Italian. But then it means something different. And you're like, like I remember parere in Italian means like, I think it means to seem. Let me check. Parere. Okay, no, I'm some stupid. Apparently it means opinion. I'm stupid. Apparently it means opinion. But the same word in Latin means to obey, like it's a verb. So I remember like, oh, actually, no, no, I'm not wrong. No, not to seem, but like to like appear. To appear. Uh, I remember that's the thing. Like that's how I kind of like understood that word parere, like to seem. But I guess like it has like, it has a couple of meanings. But that's the only thing that I'd say. But like, besides that, there's so many words that are like exactly the same, like finestra, fenestra. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this valuable, please leave a like, subscribe and comment below. It helps me out and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.